Welcome to the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 7, Torque and Rotation. The section is 7.A, Relationship Between Arc Length and Angle Relationship. Here you could read the scenario. A coin rests on a rotating turntable. Angelica collects the following data for the distance and of the coin from the center, which is the radius, the distance the coin travels in an arc S, and the angle in which the degree through which the coin turns. All right, so the first thing, is that you are going to fill in um, the angles in the radiant. To do that, I gave you some notes here. Please take a look. Uh, this is a good time to pause the video and to write some notes if you would like to. Okay, so an angle's position of a rotating object is how far it rotates. Okay, uh, one radiant is defined as an angle subset by an arc whose length is equal to the radius. Here's the equation. Right, and you can read this to you that the angle is equal to the arc length, which is L divided by the radius. You can see that in the picture here. Okay, pause it if you would like it to see this a little bit more, but we're going to use that information to fill this in. So, what is the um, angle radius? Angle in radians. So, in this one, it would be the arc length, which is going to be this value, 0 0.07, and we're going to divide that by 0 0.70 which is in radian so let me grab decimals for you and to show you the arc length is 0 0.07 and you're going to divide that by the radian which is 0 0.20 okay and you get 0 0.03 good zero point three five again we are using this equation okay um, repeat the process again arc length which is 0 0.10 divided by 0 0.20 is for the second one so let's just do that zero arc length 0 010 divided by 0 020 That's the second one. The third one, 0, 016 divided by 20. Fourth one, 0, let me go back here. I forgot the decimal. All right. Good. Next one, 0 0.26 divided by 0 0.20. Next one, 0 0.55 divided by 0 0.20. Arc length for the next one is what? 0.84 divided by 0 0.40. What's the next one? 2.83 divided by 0 0.45. Okay. All right. So that gave us all our values. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to write it in the chart now. 0. Point 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 1.05, 0.6 is 1.3, 0.55 was 2.75, is that correct? No, that does not look right. This is 55 divided by 35. Yeah. Okay, this should be 1, 1.57. This should be 2.1. And this should be 6.28. Again, we are using this equation. If you need help, you again, you are using this equation. And if you would like me to write this, this is the angle in radian this is the arc length and this is the radius okay if you would like to know what it represents this is what it means okay all right so okay next we ask which trio should angela use if she wants to create a graph that it is the arc length 
versus the angle in radians. So she wants the arc length. Okay, we she wants to graph arc length and angles in radians. Okay, how can she graph that? Which trial should she use? Okay, I would say that she should use only from one through five. One through five, okay? Now you're gonna explain why. Okay, so pause this video, take this time to explain why you should only use trials one through five. All right, I said that for the trial from one through five, the radius is constant, which makes the arc length only a function of the angle radians. After the sixth trial, the radius changes. Therefore, you can't use those. Next, Parsi, you're going to create a graph for the arc length versus angle and radiance. Sketch the line of best fit. I'm going to be using this on Excel. All right. So right here is going to be my input, which is my angles and radians. My output is going to be my arc length. Okay. And I'm just going to plug in my values here based on the chart. So my first angle of radiance was 0 0.35. The Zero point three five, and the arc length at that point was zero point zero seven. Okay, and let me repeat that. So this was zero point five, arc length was zero point ten, arc radian zero point eight. This is arc length is zero point sixteen. Uh, one point oh five is the eight angle in radians. Arc length is zero point two one. Angle and radians 1.3, arc length is 0 0.26. Alright. Select my data, insert, scatter. There you go. And I can just change this if I, if I would like to make it better. Okay. My X my X interest my X axis, you should always want to label. And I said that was my angle in radians. And my Y values are my arc length, and that is going to be in meters. Okay, you can right uh, left click on the data to select it, right click, head add trend line. here so you couldn't see the data point sorry about that so all right now you should see it a little bit better, okay? So, le so let me repeat that process for you, okay? You could right click, left click on the data, right click, format trend lines, then you could hit the display equation to get that, all right? So that's how it should look like, good? So I'm just going to pause it while I bring this image over to the other side, okay? All right, we're back. So I just brought the image over from the Excel sheet, okay? All right, so again, when you draw the line of best fit for the data, you wanna make sure that um, 
it has equal amount of points above and below the line okay all right so now let's take a look at the next part it says to calculate the slope you could grab any data point that you would want um, but for me I will let's see if I can allow this you just do not use the data points for, for this calculation so I have to grab some values here all right um, the best part is I already have it here from the calculation um, so let me just grab some data points for you okay all right so my first one here I could take a look at the 0 0.04 so 0 0.04 comma um, 0 0.2 so this is my x1. My next one is 0 0.9. So this is my 0 0.09 comma. My y there would be around 0 0.18. Okay. Good. So here I can um, now just do the slope formula. Okay. All right. So we have our equation that we can set up. Slope is defined by m is e m, which is the slope, is equal to delta y over delta x, which is just y two minus y one divided by x two minus x one. Based on the points, you should have. 0 0.18 minus 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.9 subtract 0 0.2 this is going to be equal in the calculator you should get 0 0.14 over 0 0.7 and this is all in um, meters and this is unit less down here so you could say it's 0 0.2 meters all right 0 0.2 meters is also given here on excel when you look at it okay all right, so the next part is what is the significance of the slope? So here the slope should tell you something, okay? What do you think the slope is? Pause the video and try to answer that. All right, and I said here that the slope of the line is equal to the radius. Also notice that the arc length and the angle radians have a linear relationship, okay? Because look at this value, 0 0.2 was your what? Radius, that's what was significant about it. That's what I exactly I said. Look at your data points here. Okay. The next point, you want to write a, an equation. And again, this is a linear relationship. Um, so you should know the equation for a line. Hint, it is y equals mx plus b. Okay. Pause the video and try to do point E. All right. So, okay. So, y equals mx plus b can be described as the output is equal to the slope times your input plus the starting value. In this case, it behaved the same exact way. The arc length is equal to the radius times the theta, okay, which is exactly like this. All right. I would like you to understand that in this case, the slope, the y, the output is your what? Arc length. Okay, this was your output here. All right, the arc length, your input is your angle in radiance. And the slope here was your radius. All right, so if you multiply your radius times your input, you should get your output. That made sense, right? If you would like a better way of looking at it, right? Also, just think about it in a line, okay? Remember, your final velocity, no, your final position is given by your velocity or your speed times the time plus your starting value, okay? In the circle world, it behaves the same exact way. The final position is the same thing as the arc length. Your velocity is the same thing as the radius because, again, that is the change. And your time is your angle. Okay, technically there should be a starting arc length here, but we're gonna assume the starting arc is zero. Okay, so this is a neat way of looking at it and hopefully you get a better understanding of how angles 
the radius and the arc length are connected, it should be reminding you of the linear equations, okay? All right, but there you go. Those are all your solutions for um, 7.8.